ever since I was a teen, I've been studying successful people, like Mr. Nate Offer. And when you study successful people, they weren't always the same person that they are later, true? Right? Everybody's got to start somewhere. I, we have so many people that come up and say, dude, I want, I want to do videos, or I want to start to do social, or I want to start to have a brand, or I want to get leads, right? Like Perry's getting freaking 80 qualified appointments every week from his Healthy Insurance Dude Facebook page, right? Because he's investing in branding and marketing, and it didn't start out that way, but then two years later, hey, he is now, right? You can tell that nothing ever happens overnight. The same thing is, is true in our business, by the way. 92% of insurance agents fail because they want overnight success. They think that maybe because I made nine grand my first month and 117 grand my first year that like everyone should. And I, I'm a natural born salesperson that grew up, you gotta remember, I grew up in the insurance industry. You know, I had a father figure that was already successful, like just like Sam. So for me to walk in the insurance industry, I was expected to be successful quickly or I was gonna be, I mean, I was gonna be embarrassed, right? Like my father came up to me, most people don't know this. My father came up to me literally when I got my license and said, you will make $100,000 your first year. You're my son, you'll win chairman's council, you'll make the top trip to the five-star resort in California, you'll make 100 grand, I promise you it'll happen. I was fortunate to have that type of father figure in my life that was already successful, that constantly gave me praise and compliments and shout them with encouragement and everything else. And it propelled me to be like, holy freak, I gotta get my act together or I'm probably not gonna make a hundred grand. And yeah, for those that, you know, I, I, I know several of you, because you're 80%, at least semi know my story now. But for those that don't, you know, I, I was 20 years old, in college, playing basketball, taking 21 credit hours a semester, practices, games, tournaments, full-time student athlete. I could have used a lot of excuses, like I don't have time, which a lot of agents use. Oh, I got kids, or oh, I'm married, or you know, oh, there's a pandemic, or you know, oh, my, you know, my, my car, I have a flat tire, so there goes September, you know. Um, <laughs> like, it, it, I mean, there's a lot of people in the insurance industry like that. Yeah. And the only reason why I was successful, there's a few reasons that I'm gonna walk through, and I'm gonna share some stories. The main thing that I did is I set out and set a goal and said, I will. It wasn't maybe, it wasn't I'll try or I can or I can't. It was I will earn $100,000 my first year in the insurance business. I walked in my first day to a recruiting meeting and the manager had all of us stand up and he said, all right, now take a look around. So we start sizing each other up, you know. I'm like, okay, I can, you know, I can take him. I, I don't know about her, but you know, I, I got him, you know. <laughs> the red's coming out. I'm getting competitive. Right. I'm like, okay. He says, now everybody sit down, but you, right? And he didn't pick me, which as a red, obviously irritated me. <laughs> I'm starting to learn all these colors today. I'm like, man, I love this. It explains so much now. And when he did that, in that moment, I thought, this dude doesn't know me. If there's going to be a one, Marlon, I'm going to be the one, Pete. And I wrote down in that moment, I will earn $100,000 my first year in the insurance business. A lot of people in the insurance industry say we're going to do something. A lot of agents have a tendency to procrastinate. If it's good enough to do tomorrow, it's good enough to do now. I don't put anything off. Right? If I say I'm going to do something later, the easiest person in the world to lie to is you. And I used to lie to myself a lot. I didn't always do stuff when I said I would do it. I finally flipped the switch and had to punch myself in the face and say, hey, when you say you're going to do something, you've got to actually do it or you're a hypocrite. Right? I mean, I remember in 2018, after throwing the first 8% Nation Conference, I'm talking about energy is everything and I didn't even work out. So literally, for the last two years, I've worked out almost every single day. Because after the conference, I was like, dude, if you're going to be on stage 
And you're going to start training and talking to people and trying to become this you know, public figure, if you will, in the insurance industry. And you don't even work out and you're talking about energy, you're talking about discipline and you're, you know, you're waking up at 6.30 and you're not working out and you're not, you know, you're not, you're writing down goals, you're not writing them down every day and you're not as cool as Marlon because you're not taking a cold shower, you know, and all these other things. <laughs> and finally, I'm like, something, I had to wake up. Something had to flip, as coach calls, something had to flip the switch in me to be like, dude, you've got to wake up and start to go after this thing and actually do the things that you're saying that other people should do. Right, so I'm not there yet, but I am trying to be a better example for the entire industry on things that we should and should not do. I remember, like this is freaking amazing to me right now because I remember growing up as a kid, my grandfather who passed away last year, he was a Baptist pastor for 40, 50 years. Most people don't know this. I grew up watching him get up and preach every Sunday, every Wednesday night. We'd have camp meetings, revivals, everything else, right? I'd watch videos as a teenager of Zig Ziglar and Brian Tracy and other speakers. And I'd watch all, I'd watch all these speakers and I, I would be like, my dream one day, I remember saying this when I was you know, 10 years old. My dream is to one day to wake up and be a public speaker, is to travel the world and speak and help people. You hear, you, you hear a lot from successful people about how they, nobody else believed it would happen, but they believed it themselves at some point earlier in the future that whatever later would become a reality, right? Nate writes all of his goals on blue cards and like the house thing like freaks me out because he said he was going to end up with a house like this and then he ends up buying the house that practically is a clone of the house that he wanted. Why? Because he planned to have that in the future ahead of time. If you're taking notes today, whatever you want to have, you have to decide to go get. And whether you believe it or not, in this moment, I promise you, you can go get it. I remember when I started doing YouTube, my personal income dipped a little bit. I'd always made well over six figures selling insurance. And I remember telling my wife, this was back in probably 2015. I remember telling my wife, I was meant for more than what I'm doing. I was meant for, to, 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 I was meant for more than how we're living. I was meant to help more people than I'm helping right now. I was meant to do something like this, and I wasn't. And I don't know about you guys, but that, that ate me up. Every single day, every single morning, I'm writing down my goals, I'm waking up, and I'm not living it. It's not a reality, and it's driving me nuts. But it doesn't happen overnight. So what did I do? What do you do in that moment when you're like, dude, it's not a reality, but it needs to be reality. I want it to be reality, but it's not a reality yet. And I know it will be if I get my act together. So here's a few things that I did over these last five years consistently that I'm going to keep doing because 8%, yeah, it's cool. And it's, you know, we're having a great experience and we're getting a lot of amazing speakers and we're trying to make it better. I am not pleased with the event. I'm not satisfied the day after April Nation 2020. Maybe a little more than April Nation 2019, because I was not at all. But two years ago, I, you know, I, I never even planned a birthday party, so you know, I guess I give myself a little bit of a break, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I haven't stepped up like I know I can and like I know I will in the future. I'm telling you, 8% nation will, I'm proclaiming it now, will have 10,000 agents in attendance at some point in the future. Yeah. I guarantee freaking it. Yeah. I mean, it ain't going to happen if you guys don't keep coming, though, okay? Let's just keep it real, right? But, it, but you guys are going to keep coming if it doesn't keep getting better and leveling up every single year. Nobody wants to go to the same event every single time. Nobody wants to go to an event when it keeps getting worse every year, right? This year, we leveled up a little. Next year, we're gonna level up a lot. Yes. I've already got some insane ideas that I'm not gonna share right now, 
that you'll just have to see next year. <laughs> okay? We're about to go to, we're, we're leaving in the, in the morning for a week to go to Destin, Florida. And it's a, it's a tradition now that after a big event, when you're freaking exhausted and everything else, to take about a week off to think about the event that we just did, to evaluate, to review, right? To, continue, to, 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 to think about, okay, what, what, what was great? What sucked? What can we improve? What, what, what needs to be better? What, what creative, crazy ideas can we come up with as a team? So that it's better next time. And I do that in my business constantly, by the way, right? As an agent, I'm like, how the freak can I get better this week? How the freak can I get closer to my goal this month? How the freak can I get to 100 grand immediately, right? I actually truly believe, and, and you know, I mean, shoot, Nate, Pete, we got a lot of people that could actually probably pull this off. I truly believe that if I wanted to go back out into the field and sell insurance every single day, that I could personally go out, I don't care, if, you know, field, Zoom, phone, it doesn't matter, and write a million dollars of life insurance premium in one calendar year all on my own without a team. And, and I, why, why do I say that? Because in our, in our office, in our, on our wall, it says what? Think big. A lot of us are thinking way too small. I'm still thinking too small. I'm still thinking way too small. And I'm going to use this time over this next week to think a lot bigger to hopefully go a lot farther. Step one of what I've done over the last five years. Number one, I made a decision to do something. I don't know what that decision is for you, but for me, it was I want to become a thought leader in the insurance space. I want, when I pass away, you know, I'm not as old as Nate, so maybe I got, you know, 50 or 60 years, okay? <laughs> I want to leave a legacy on the insurance business like no one else has. But you can't do that if you're not constantly putting out content, if you're not helping a lot of people, and you're not throwing a massive event. You just can't, right? So that was step one for me. I made a decision to do that, right? Step two for me was determining what my goals were and what I wanted to see happen in the future. Step three for me was I knew that as this thing grew and I was consistent with content that I would need a team around me. That is incredible. Give it up for all of our staff and team one more time for me. And they're good, but we're not there yet. Guess what? Every piece of our organization can get better. They're phenomenal, but we need more phenomenal people. Right? We do. Step four for me was no matter what anyone else thinks, I'm not going to give up on my dreams. Far too many people care what everyone else thinks. Most people are afraid to shoot a video talking about what they do, which is going to help you sell more insurance, by the way, because... I've got friends that don't like insurance, or I've got friends that make fun of me, or I've got this, that, and the other. I've got people around me that don't care for me, or I've got people around me that aren't supportive, or I grew up in, you know what, my parents were supportive, right? Or I don't talk to my siblings, or whatever. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. At some point, it, it's, it's hard to get started, but Coach Bird always says step one, is to show up. Right. Step one is to show up. Once you actually get started, it's amazing. You Along the way, initially, I cared what every YouTube comment thought. All seven of them, okay? <laughs> All of them, all right? I just did. You go back and look at my old videos. I mean, we're talking just almost dozens of people were watching. Almost <laughs> dozens. And I cared what everyone thought. And there was a point where I thought, do people not like this? Is nobody watching? 
Does, does nobody care? Am I not helping? Am I hurting? I thought, you know what? My father taught me, taught me to be persistent. I told the story about how my first job, I wanted to, I was puking in the yard. I didn't want to go to work. And my dad said, dude, you do whatever you want to do, but you know what I would do, right? I saw him show up every single day his entire life. He has never, since I've been born, 30, he has never missed a day of work in his life. 30 years. Never missed a day. What's step one? Show up. That's the hardest thing for some people. But it's the easiest thing to do, right? So the, 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 Nate was talking about it. Marshall Silver was talking about it. Wealth, success, apparently it isn't difficult. It's just different. Showing up makes you a little different, you know? I know the blues don't want to be on time, but hey, that's, that's part of showing up, you know? That's part of it. Showing up. To me, in our office, shows me that you want to go up. It shows me you want to grow. It shows me that you want to take yourself to the next level. I ask our team and salespeople to do stuff that they don't want to do, crazy stuff. I had three of them come and run a half marathon with me. They're sitting on the front row right here, and none of the three of them had ran more than a couple miles in a decade. But guess what? They all th three finished 13.1 miles We also have about close to 20 salespeople in our office Guess which three are sitting right there The ones that force themselves to do something they didn't want to do right they're putting themselves out of their comfort zone Nobody wants to run a half marathon not even people that love it Let's, you know what I mean? They just don't. I don't think they do. I don't know why they would. <laughs> They're investing in themselves. I didn't buy their ticket to this event. They're like, hey, we want to go to Nate's event. Then go pay Nate to come. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like... I, this isn't my job to invest in your personal development and self-improvement. Nate says constantly... People only value what they pay for. I'm done giving people stuff for free. Every person I've ever given free stuff for is gone. Every person I've ever given free stuff to has failed. Every person I've ever given free stuff to has taken advantage of me. Who's seen that to be true? Yeah. Yeah. Then let's stop doing it. <laughs> Nate taught me that, by the way. I, I, I can associate with the yellows in a big way because I still care. Even though I'm a red and I'm aggressive and I'm freaking nuts. And I've probably got as high of a, you know, 63.5, as high of a red number on my chest. I still care about people succeeding. I still care about people winning. I still believe that I can turn the worst salesperson in the world into successful because I'm going to try to drag them to success. You can't drag everyone to success. You can't want it, if you have sales organizations, you can't want it more than they do. Far too many people want it more than the people that they're trying to help. The, the, I mean, the, the difference for me was I wanted it more than my sales manager wanted it for me. I just did. Good. And I woke up and went, out and went after it every single day. Cold calling, cold door knocking. I didn't know what a lead was. Like, how cool is that to where people are actually sending, like signing with their signature, a card, saying, I would like more information about this. I'm like, holy freak. I wrote like 250000 a premium my first year. You know, I'm like, how much would I have, how much would I have freaking made if I would have had those things walking around? <laughs> like, I would go to doors and be, you know, they'd be like, Dude, who are you, man? Are you trying to like, you know, I mean, what, what's going on here? Like, for, for, I would knock doors from, hi, my name's Cody. We've never met. To thank you for your business. Welcome to the family. 
And I'm, I am glad I started out cold calling and cold door knocking. It made me more resilient. It made me more persistent. I actually believe most new and this is not popular. We'll put it on YouTube later and I'll get you know, 50 negative comments. That's cool, go ahead, okay? I actually believe that every new insurance agent should start the way that I did. No leads, warm market, cold calling. Let's scrub it, you know, so you don't get fined, okay? Cold door knocking, go out and knock 120 doors today and let's see how you do. Well, what do I say? Well, go figure it out. That's how I got started. I bet you'd either figure it out or fail, right? That's right. Yeah. For me, failure was never an option. At some point, if failure is ever in the back of your mind at all, you'll get up and ring the bell. I'm not as in shape as those dudes, but I can swear to you, I would pass out before I rang that flipping bell. I can promise you. Yeah. I'm doing an Ironman in Galveston, Texas in November 22nd. And if you're like, okay, what's that? Well, it's a, it's a half. So the Ironman is even crazier. It's a 1.3 mile swim in the ocean. It's a 56 mile bike ride. And it's a 13.1 mile half marathon run. You say, why the freak would you want to do that? I don't know. No. So I can say I did it. So I can say I did it. I get bored very easy. <laughs> we bought a new house, $695,000 home. My wife freaking loves it. We got a pool. She's happy. My dog's running around. I go to her and I'm like, babe, I, got, I, got, I need something to like motivate me, challenge me. She's like, dude, won't you chill out and stop and look around, man? I'm like, no, I need something. Like, what, 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 what's next, man? What's next? Who else is like that? Yeah. We're like, dude, it ain't, I mean, it, it isn't like we're, you know what I mean? It, it's just never, it's not, it's never enough in a good way. It ain't like, you know what I mean? It ain't like, it's never enough in a bad way. It's just that I, I, have, I haven't arrived and I hope I never do. I have not arrived and I hope I never do. And the moment you think you have, you're done. You're done. Let me leave you with this. 16 seconds and counting. I may not get done in 12. Huh? Did I say five things? Did I say I would give five? I don't. All right, you want a fifth one? Take action now. Okay, there you go. I made that one up, but it's a good one, okay? It's a good one, all right? Thanks, babe. That's more like a green thing to do than a blue, but all right, okay. You're supposed to just go along with this party, okay? I mean, come on. Yeah, that's true. That's, she, she keeps me in line well. I'm going to leave you with this. There's going to come a point in the next 12 months that something doesn't go our way. We're challenged in a way that we didn't see, right? We've all seen that this year. We feel like we're getting pulled underwater and we're about to drown. Can't do anything right, nothing's going our way. We think we're gonna fail, we're not sure if we can make it. We can't even afford leads but we know we want to succeed. Eric Thomas says, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. That's right. That's, right. That's the difference between a lot of people that are successful and unsuccessful is when they're in hell week and there's a bell close by, they never ring it. Thank you. If you love this, you'll love how to do a presentation for insurance agents. There's a couple pieces of this video that I've never talked about before. It's right here, click on it.
you'll love it. Hey, almost every insurance agent I know struggles with objections, specifically what to do and how to improve your closing ability. So I'm gonna talk through several different things, okay? I always talk about 